Hello everybody, this is Dr Andrews and welcome to my help video which is going to be all about viewing, doing and submitting work on Microsoft Teams. So here I am on Microsoft Teams um, and as you can see these are all the teams that I'm a member of. You might see your class there in the list. Um, and just for the purposes of this video I'm going to work in my fake class that I've made here called Testing Team uh, just so that I can show you what's going to happen. So I'm going to go into my testing team and in here you will see that on the posts section we have a little message saying that this team has an assignment and I've set this assignment um, and it's some work that I want you to do and as you can see there it's due 17th of April uh, which on the making of this video is tomorrow. Um, the other way you can find out what assignments you've been set, and this is for all the teams that you're in, this will happen, not just mine, um, you can go to your activities drop down menu, um, and so in the feed here you can see, look there, um, there's an assignment uh, has been mentioned for one of my teams, and you get a little pop up for that and it will give you an announcement um, on the mobile app as well if you've got that on up and running. Um, you've also got a little assignments thing, uh, tab here that you can use. Yours will just give you a nice list of all the assignments that you are due. Um, it's obviously slightly different here because I've got the sort of teacher version of Teams, um, but yours will give you a nice list of all the assignments you've got to do from all of your teachers. Right, I'm just going to go back to the team where we were. Uh, so here are um, is the team. Also, you've got an assignments tab at the top of the page here. So even if the assignment uh, post has gone and got lost in lots of other chat. You've got a nice assignments um, tab up here that you can go to and see your assignments. Right, so I'm going to view the assignment um, and your screen will come up and look something like this. So this is a student view, this is what you will see of the assignment and it's got a uh, title, due date and time and this will vary from teacher to teacher. Then it's got your instructions for you there and then it's got um, materials. Um, you'll see there's two different types of, of attachments here. There's reference materials and these are ones that are there just to help you out but you can't edit them and if you click on them they will open in Microsoft Teams. Um, and then you've got student work and this is a document that you will be able to edit and change. It will only be for you so there won't be any worry about anyone else being able to access it or edit it. It will only be shared between you and your teacher. Um, I strongly recommend that you do the easiest version, which is you click on that uh, tab and then it will open up the document um, that has been put there for you to do your work. You can then go up here to edit document and you get two options. You get edit in the Word desktop app or you get my favourite option, which is edit in browser. And this is where you can make quick changes right here on Teams using Word. And this is the simplest way to do it. So we're going to click on there. And now I've got a Word document with all of the um, editing tools that I need to be able to do my document. And it's brilliant. Um, it's because it's an online um, platform. It is saving as you go, you don't even need to remember to do that, uh, which makes it nice and easy. And you can just go through and treat it exactly like a normal Word document. When you're done, just double check that it says saved, and then you can close it when you are finished. And then it's there. Now, because um, I'm in the teacher version of Teams and not as a student, um, this isn't showing everything that you will have on your screen. You will also have um, a section down here which should say add work or a little plus symbol um, so that you can click on that and upload anything you want to. So some um, task that you're set you may need to do something somewhere else and upload it. Also if you aren't able to work on Teams all the time, maybe you've only got one laptop and there's two of you trying to get your work done at the same time, you may want to download the work. So a e really easy way to do that is um, if you just go to the dots over here, you can very easily just download documents um, onto your desktop um, and then you can use them offline or you can use them elsewhere. But please upload that document back onto Teams 
and submit via Teams when you are done. Also, if you want to write on a piece of paper and take a photograph, you can do that. And then again, on Teams, upload it again. And you will have, promise you, you will have um, some form of uploading a link here that you can just click on and use very easily. What you will also have on your screen up here will be a hand in button, um, hopefully very big and very obvious. Uh, and when you've finished and you've uploaded all of your work, if you click hand in, then it will give me a notification to say that you've submitted your work and then I can mark it for you. When it comes to marking, there's two different ways that a teacher might show you um, or I might show you how I'm going to mark your work. I might do it um, out of points, so maybe if it's a set of exam questions, uh, I might do the total mark of the exam questions and then I can feed you back what score you've got for that. Or maybe I do it as a percentage, so out of 100. Um, but for this piece of work, because it's, it's a written piece of work, I have made a uh, marking grid so you can see how I'm going to assess your work. So this, um, this task has two different uh, sections in it um, that you'll see when you come to do the task. And for part one, the first thing you need to do is explain why the problem is so important. And then I've put some criteria here that you need to be able to meet to get different scores. So to get a good, um, what I'd be looking for is that you've given me lots of detailed explanation of the current situation um, and you've included most of the issues involved and then you've given me one to two figures to back up your answer. And this is going to vary from assignment to assignment but if you've got a marking grid like this I would strongly recommend that you have a look at it before you do your work or maybe when you think you've finished just sort of do a bit of self-assessment. What grade would you give yourself? What could you do to improve it? So if maybe you've got a good because you've given a mostly detailed explanation, could you give a detailed explanation and improve your answer so your teacher could give you an excellent? Just something for you to have a look at there. There's one more button on this page that I wanna show you and it is this one here with a book and a little speaker. Um, and if you click it, this is the immersive reader. So if you're struggling to um, read a document or you just want a bit of help with new words or with any language, this is a fantastic feature that will read um, it out to you, which is fab. So I'll just give you a little demo of this one. Reduce, reuse and recycle. Due April 17, 2020, 11.59pm. Instructions, tasks, one, watch the video. Okay. So that will just give you a bit of help. And it also works on your documents as well. So if I just go back to the document that you'd be working on, you've got an immersive reader function here. So there's absolutely tons of text on this page, which may seem a little bit overwhelming, but with the immersive reader, you can get it to read out to you um, each word as it goes through. You can select it to do different things. Um, and I've set mine so it translates as well certain words into Japanese and look it's also given me some pictures there to sort of explain what is going on. Um, let's have a look at another one. Oh, I wonder what it does for government. There you go, it's translated it. If anyone speaks Japanese you can tell me how good that is. Will it or will it say it out loud? There you go. Very cool. Let's do a word that I know in Japanese so I can check if it uh, if it's correct. Let's try read, I know that word. Yoni. Oh it is right. Uh, there we go. So that is there to help and support you if you need it. Also, if you just want to have a bit of fun listening to their pronunciation, it's quite good. Right, let's close that down. Okay, so hopefully now you have a great idea of uh, how you can find the work that I'm going to set you, how you can then do the work in straight in Teams. You don't need to, to do anything else with it. Do it all in Teams. Um, and when you're finished, you just click Submit, which will be up here. And I will um, send you uh, a link to another YouTube video which does it, uh, which films it from a proper student view, just in case you get a bit stuck and you need a bit of extra help. Okay, I think that is all that you need to know. If you have any questions, please do uh, post them in your Teams chat and I will get through them and answer them as quickly as possible. Thanks everybody. Hi everyone, I just wanted to do a tiny little extra snippet on the end of this video just to show you how to change the language in the immersive reader because I forgot to do that. So I've gone into the document 
and I've clicked on Immersive Reader. And if you want to change the language so that you can see the translation like I've done here for Japanese, all you need to do is go to the Reading Preferences tab and then it's got a translate function. And so I've got it set by word. Uh, you could change it to by document if you wanted to. And I've also got the picture dictionary turned on. And this was turned on by default. I didn't have to do that. But the language you can change to be other things. So let's go for, ooh, Icelandic. That's a new one. Um, so I've just changed the language and just changed that. And then if I click on these, there we go. I've got my Icelandic has come up there as my translation. Hope that helps. Thank you.